All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I know there's a lot going on with the Jamin Davis situation, but I feel like it's time to talk about something fun. I'm coming with my daily training camp analysis and breakdown. You know Rico of Street Scores, man. We got to talk about every single position group, even starting with the coaches. I got to give y'all some injury updates before we even dive into all of that. You know we go from coaches to quarterbacks to running back, wide receiver, all the way down to the DBs, each position group. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever the surprising the expected anything and a lot of interesting things happened today especially with the fact that Jamin Davis wasn't at practice today for obvious reasons a couple of the linebackers in the depth chart stepped up and made some plays today in his place also Sam Howell had somewhat of an off day so we're gonna definitely have to talk about that and why you shouldn't panic and a lot more but before we dive into all of that make sure you still farm the like button still farm the subscription button and still farm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release these informative and opinionated videos of course i'm giving y'all daily training camp updates i'm uploading the clips from practice i'm also doing breakdowns like this video every day of practice tomorrow we finally put on a pad so i'm really excited about that practice should be a little bit different because of that as well and of course stay tuned for all of the content any breaking news like this Jamin Davis situation any stadium updates anything commanders on and off the field I'm gonna update y'all on and I'm still working on the rookie film sessions as well so stay tuned for everything and let's go ahead and get to it let's get it you tell your family you're gonna be a commander All right, so first of all, this practice was closed to the public, but fans can attend the practice tomorrow. And also speaking of tomorrow, as in August 1st, that will be the first padded practice of training camp. So I'm really excited about that alone. And then on top of that, fans can also attend as well because today was a very quiet day. There were no fans. So it was a little bit of a different atmosphere than the commanders were used to having fans there July 27th, 28th, and 29th. And then again, just to remind y'all, fans can be there August 1st, 2nd, and third and then again the eighth the ninth then the 13th the 14th the 18th and the 19th now also because fans weren't allowed to go we have a little less information coming from today's practice but i have enough to talk about at least every position group except for special teams today and also speaking of pads not only will they practice in pads tomorrow is in tuesday but they'll practice in pads wednesday and friday as well no pads today and thursday though also it's been reported by matthew perez that the commanders are focusing more on run heavy things and trying to install that part of the offense now that we're starting to put the pads on which makes sense that's kind of expected but that's really cool to hear about that because again like i've already explained in previous videos we focus primarily and even at times only on the passing game that's the hardest part of the offense to understand to get down pack the game chemistry for and stuff like that so it's very understandable especially with a new quarterback and a new offensive coordinator everything's new pretty much a new offensive line the only people that are exactly where they were last year is Charles Leno at left tackle because even Samuel Cosme who was starting for us last year was right tackle now he's right guard everything else is different as of right now Sadiq Charles and Chris Paul are battling for the starting left guard spot Nick Gates is just starting center Andrew Wiley is just starting right tackle everything is new except for I guess really the receiving group honestly and even then Deami Brown is just becoming so much better that that even feels a little bit different and then Brian Robinson and we have a whole new version of him then we drafted chris rodriguez the split carries with him and antonio gibson's about to get an expanded role this offense is completely different so it's very understandable while we focus pretty much primarily and even again some days only on the passing game First of all, that helps the defense as well with us spending two draft picks, our first two draft picks, first and second round on secondary. It makes sense that we would want to get them as involved in developing as far as learning coverages and what to do in certain situations because at the end of the day, as a cornerback, we expect you to contribute against the run, but your primary objective is to stop the passing game and to lock up receivers and the read quarterbacks and things like that. So it's been a huge benefit and we're further ahead in our development especially like sam Howell, as far as understanding the offense and understanding certain concepts plays pre-snap decision making and things like that a lot of that has been fruitful because we have focused on the past game but it's cool now that we're starting to get to the pads we're about to finally start actually running the ball for real and see what brian robinson antonio gibson chris rodriguez jared patterson jonathan williams and all these guys look like and also most importantly what is sam Howell gonna look like with some rpo stuff and then 
even on top of that, what is the offensive line going to look like now that we're finally running the ball? Because the defensive line is at an advantage over the offensive line in the passing game, point blank, period. When you're an offensive lineman having to back up and then at the same time keep somebody in front of you and hold them still, that's more difficult than if it's the run game and you're just road grazing, you're just pushing people, you're getting off the ball, off the snap, and you're just attacking. You know that? And that's what defensive linemen get to do every play. So offensive linemen love run blocking way more than they love pass blocking. The only reason they like pass blocking is so that they can get the bigger bag and get paid way more money and get them big time contracts but if you ask any office alignment run blocking is way easier way simpler and more than likely far more fun as well so i know they're excited because the defensive line has been killing our offensive line so far in training camp which is expected this is a new offensive line like i already explained and the defensive line like i've already said is going to be the best in the nfl this upcoming season chase young and Montez sweat were the only question marks and they look dominant chase young looks like he's probably the best he's ever been especially like technique wise and health wise as of late as well so it's like you expect the defensive line to be better than the offensive line in general and now they're going to finally get a little bit of payback with us starting to run the ball this is going to be really fun i want to see how the defensive line responds to the run game that we're getting coaching wise nothing major other than like i already explained eric bmi is now moving to the phase of training camp practices where we're going to start to implement and install the run game which is i'm really intrigued to see how it's different from scott turner's because running the ball isn't just simply give the ball to the running back and find a hole there's a lot of complicated things intricate things there that i'm pretty sure eric bmi is going to find a way to make our run game more effective than scott turner did so i'm really interested in seeing how what's the process what's the logic what's the play design what's the What's the play calling? Because play calling is a rhythm. I mean, one play could work in a certain situation, but not work in another. Even if the defense is in the exact same formation or whatever, it's just like if you call this play in the first quarter compared to where you call it in the third quarter, it's a completely different outcome potentially. I mean, it's just certain like random little things like that that make big differences. Can't wait to see how Eric Benemy runs this offense. We've only been seeing half of it with the passing game. Can't wait to see what the other half looks like when you add the run game. And then also injuries no major news other than the fact that Jamin Davis will not only not be at practice today and I already did a whole video breakdown with this Jamin Davis situation with all of the information that we currently have but it sounds like we probably won't have him for several training camp practices maybe even some preseason maybe even some regular season that's it no real like injuries though which again is great as of right now the commanders are in like a best case scenario when it comes to injuries because you're never going to be 100% that's just the nature of football that's the nature of the nfl especially and we're literally as healthy as an nfl team can be at this point in an offseason like literally as healthy as it gets i mean my boy our tight end armani rogers is on ir right now and that's literally it everybody else is good deron Payne's back from injury nick gates it doesn't seem like that injury was anything serious we're we're good to go basically so i'm excited now going on to quarterback Again, Sam Howe struggled a little bit today, and it wasn't a good start at all, like at all, at all. Um, his first pass was behind Terry, and Terry dropped it. It was still kind of catchable, but it was behind him. It was a little inaccurate. And then he finally completed his first pass after a few unsuccessful plays to Jahan Dotson on a crossing route for his literally his first completion up to that point. I mean, it was only a few plays. It was only like a couple of plays, but still, like that was his first completion. He started off pretty rough compared to what he normally starts off as and then he ended the series with a touchdown to terry mclaurin who had a toe tapping catch near the front of the end zone it was like near the sideline somewhere only terry mclaurin could get it and the db had no chance and that's the sam Howe that we've known so far this training camp that finally came out and terry mclaurin loved it he was out there screaming good ball and all of that type of stuff like really hype kind of like a veteran helping his young quarterback like you've been struggling today but then you just threw this perfect dime and it's just like that's who you really are that struggling stuff that's not who you are you just had an off period but the ball you just threw that's who you are and i love the fact that terry mccoy is taking like a veteran approach there to kind of pick up his quarterback and let him know man you one of them ones bro just keep doing that like don't let anything discourage you i'm pretty sure sam Howell wasn't discouraged but i love the fact that terry mclaurin got really hyped about that touchdown to let sam Howell know that it's all good we're good to go he said hey good ball man quote and all of that man and it was a really good ball from sam Howell from everything that i'm hearing but then later on sam Howell got picked off by cameron curl during sevens on sevens 
and it just wasn't a good throw it wasn't a good decision nothing it was just a really bad throw period um but hey yeah man at the end of the day what i'm gonna say before we move on from sam howell and go to jacoby Brissett is that i mean at the end of the day bro this is a quarterback with one career start and this is going to be arguably one of the best defenses in the nfl so it's just like how hard can we get on this guy that's only been running this this is his fifth day of training camp practice as almost like a red shirt freshman under a new system again like i've said this is his third offensive coordinator in three years he had he was in college unc then he had scott turner for one year and now he has eric Bieniemy. and he's already further ahead in his development he's fixed his mechanics up he's he's gotten better and quicker with the decision making and going through his progressions and things like that he's further ahead in his development than we expected but at the same time he's not pat mahomes yet he's not an elite quarterback yet he has the traits like that lewis riddick video that i just put out there a few uh, like a couple of hours ago a few hours ago by the time you're watching this video um but that is there but he's just gonna have off days like this this is expected again because this is supposed to be a top defense in the nfl don't overreact to sam Howell having a bad day and it wasn't like a horrible day but it was easily his worst day so far like if he would have had this day the first day of practice we wouldn't have really even really questioned it but the fact that he's been balling out the first few days and he's made a couple of mistakes here and there the first few days as well even the, even in the great days that he had but then when you have an off day like this even with some highs he has some highlights he has some highs but he also has some lows now moving on to Jacoby Brissett he completed a drive with a touchdown to Byron Pringle and it was about like a 30 yard pass and he scored in just four plays he went three or four and was able to score in those four plays so Jacoby Brissett was putting some pressure on Sam Howell today but there's no real QB competition Sam Howell is just starting quarterback and Jacoby Brissett is just there to make sure he stays above Jake Fromm as of right now then moving on to the receivers I mean the only real noteworthy thing is that Jahan Dotson caught a couple of good passes and then like I said earlier Terry McLaurin man that 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 touchdown from sam howell was beautiful that was easily played today that was beautiful i mean the toe tap from terry mclaurin the beautiful throw from sam howell that connection is strong the sam howell to terry mclaurin connection is strong and even if they're off a couple of times i believe in them to make the right play more often than they don't I, and i think it's only going to get up get better and go up from here i mean this is only the fifth day of training camp for these guys so the connection is only going to get stronger and then also before we get up out of here and stop talking about the wide receivers again like i mentioned earlier Jacoby Brissett had that touchdown pass to Byron Pringle and man he's been making plays bro I would not be surprised and this 53 man roster ends up being Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dawson, Curtis Samuel and Deami Brown as your four locks and then the last two spots go to Byron Pringle and Marcus Kemp both guys who are not coincidentally Kansas City Chiefs players they're making plays they're strong contributors and special teams Byron Pringle is competing for the starting kick return spot right now along with uh, I believe Antonio Gibson's gonna get one of those spots and then the other spot may go to Byron Pringle and then he's out here making plays on offense against even guys like Emmanuel Forbes and then you have Marcus Kemp's who's like a special team specialist just like Jeremy Reeves an all pro special teams on kickoff coverage Marcus Kemp is like an elite blocking special teams guy on kickoff return and punt return and all of that type of stuff and you just can't find guys like that so i wouldn't be surprised if those two guys make the roster to finish up the wide receiver group and you have dax mill and a lot of guys that are out here making plays on the outside looking in and then running back the only real notable news is that that beautiful throw from sam howell to terry mclaurin for the touchdown antonio gibson did a great job picking up chase young on a block man that that is huge news man that may be one of the more impressive things that we talk about today antonio gibson who was known as a terrible pass blocker when we drafted him and it's even taken him a couple of years to even become decent and now chase young having the best off season he's had ever in his life and antonio gibson was able to pick him up on a block now granted no pads so chase young probably didn't put that much effort into trying to run through him run around him and stuff like that but the fact that antonio gibson is it's not even just physically because antonio gibson is an athletic freak again there's only like a handful of these type of guys in the nfl just period like not every team has an Antonio Gibson on it so we're not worried about the physical part but mentally knowing where to pick up the block having the technique to do it correctly to slide over and, and pick that guy up within a, a, a reasonable amount of time and space so that the quarterback still has a good enough pocket and room to throw the ball so hey man that's great to hear right down so Antonio Gibson improving as a pass blocker to the point that he could pick up Chase Young is huge because if you can pick up Chase Young on a pass block who can't you so I hey man I'm really excited to hear that that's big news and also oh 
before we leave the wide receiver situation it's really interesting that we just really don't get much news about curtis samuel like i don't hear nothing about curtis samuel i've heard his name mentioned twice so far this entire training camp and it was for like little minor things so i don't know why we don't really get curtis samuel news but i guess it's a good thing because at least we're not hearing bad things about curtis samuel especially when it pertains to his health moving on really nothing for tight end other than the fact that logan thomas doing his usual stuff all of those guys are improving as pass blockers which is going to be huge for us because in run blockers as well we need these guys to be able to block and be dual threat tight ends so that when they're on the field it doesn't automatically signal to the defense that we're throwing the ball if they're dual threat tight ends that can both block and be receiving threats that's going to be huge for keeping the defense on their toes and balanced and when a defense is balanced you know exactly where you can attack you can attack anywhere so hey man i'm really excited about that offensive line wise again chris paul like i mentioned him and sadiq charles are in rotation for the starting left guard spot and it sounds like it's almost even like at first sadiq charles was the pure starting left guard for voluntary otas mandatory mini camps and even the first couple of practices for training camp but now lately Chris Paul's been getting more and more snaps to start on left guard and I don't know if that means that Chris Paul is starting to to catch up to Sadiq Charles or anything but I'm really excited about that because again Chris Paul looked really good and I believe he could be a franchise left guard for us just off of that one game against the Cowboys I mean I wouldn't put my whole life savings on the fact that he can be an elite left guard but I saw a little something something in that Cowboys game and I'm not surprised that he's creeping up on Sadiq Charles in this starting left guard competition right now and then he had a great play specifically where he cut off John Ridgeway in one of his first snaps of the day like as soon as he got out there he was immediately ready it didn't take him a while to warm up anything he immediately got the business and then lastly before we leave offensive line like I said the fact that we didn't really get a Nick Gates update must be a good thing it must be a good sign because remember the previous practice back on Friday Nick Gates got a little hurt he was a little hobbled and things like that but again nobody talked about it in a press conference after the practice and today nobody talked about it during practice after practice press conference or nothing like that no reporters no Ron Rivera anything so no update must be a good update as far as Nick Gates goes because it must be nothing worth talking about so that's good to know Nick Gates is still healthy he's still your starting center Ricky Stromberg is your second string center trying to fight for that first string drive we'll see how that goes i'll keep you updated on that and then moving on going to the defensive side of the ball starting with the defensive line for darian mathis had a great play like on that play where jacoby Brissett threw a touchdown to byron pringle actually for darian mathis had a really nice pass rush and that's huge because just like antonio gibson we know who he can do running the ball and receiving the ball but where can you where are you at with your pass block and that's going to make you a complete running back same thing with for darian mathis on the defensive side of the ball we know you can run stuff we know you can eat up double teams but where are you at with the pass rush where's that pass rushing upside because He's not like a freak athlete like Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen are. He wasn't just this ridiculous recruit coming out of high school. He's not this athletic freak. And so it's just like he seems limited pass rush wise. And he didn't have a lot of pass rush um, skill set to him even in college. And, and we basically brought him in here to basically be a nose tackle that can eat up double teams and stop the run primarily. But if he's starting to get a pass rush plan together, if he's starting to rush the passer effectively, that's going to make everything different because then you can trust them to be out there more often as part of a four defensive line group instead of a five where he's the nose tackle if Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen need a rest and for Darian Mathis learns how to rush the passer you could easily let one of those guys sit out rest for a second and let for Darian Mathis get after the quarterback instead of only bringing them out there to stop the run and then also my boy KJ Henry I'm telling y'all I think he's going to be better than James Smith-Williams, especially by the time we get to week one of the regular season. I think he's going to play more than James Smith-Williams. I think Chase Young and what are your starting edge rushers, and KJ Henry will be that third guy that's going to be heavy in the rotation to give Chase Young and Sweat time to rest. Now, James Smith-Williams is the veteran. It comes with a higher floor, but I'm telling you, KJ Henry is a guy. I'm, I'm telling you right now, from what I've seen in college, what I'm hearing from practice so far, he's going to be one of them ones. Uh, we pretty much brought him in here with the strategy of if we don't sign Chase Young or Montez Sweat long term, he's going to be your starting edge rusher in their place moving on after the season. We'll see though. I hope we pay both guys. I highly doubt we do, but you know, at least we at, we're, it seems like we're in decent hands with KJ Henry because he had a really good play today where he would have had a sack on Jake Fromm if it was a real game situation. Great pass rush move and everything. I'm telling y'all, don't sleep on him. And then after practice, Montez Sweat had a press conference and he said about Chase Young that, quote, one thing I can say is he started to be more of a pro ever since the injury, the cold tub and pre-practice and treatment after practice. That's where he's helped this game a lot, unquote. So 
basically ever since Chase Young got hurt, it kind of humbled him. And he's had to approach the game of football a little bit differently instead of relying on his talent, actually really focusing on everything he can do to make himself a better player, not only just on the field, but off the field as far as keeping his body in the best condition it could possibly be and all of that type of stuff, utilizing all of the facilities and options that the commanders give him to just better his himself and make himself a better player, all of that type of stuff. So, hey, man, thank you, Montez Sweat, for that insight. That's great to hear. And now... Now that we're seeing Chase Young look better on the field, now with that behind the scenes information from Montez Sweat, it's kind of like, oh, okay. It's not that he just magically got better this year just simply because he's healthier, but there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that Chase Young improved as well, and it's showing on the field. The results are fruitful so far. Then moving on to the linebacker position, again, Jamin Davis. I mean, what more can we talk about it? Again, I already did a whole video breaking that down. I don't want to dive into that too much in this video, but in this place Khalid Hudson had a really good play and coverage against Logan Thomas where he forced an incompletion near the end zone clutch clutch in the red zone and then also Myla Eifler stepped up today and had a really good play where he would have had a sack on Jacoby Brissett remember when Jacoby Brissett went three or four in practice at one point completing three of his four passes and one of them resulted in a touchdown to Byron Pringle well that one incompletion came because Milo Eifler had a great blitz on him would have been a real life sack but of course they keep the play going and Milo Eifler doesn't actually hit Jacoby Brissett but it forced Jacoby Brissett to throw an incomplete pass so shouts out to him man these linebackers are stepping up while Jamin Davis is gone keep playing Jamin Davis keep playing and then DB group wise Cameron Curl, man, had an amazing play today. That Sam Howell interception that we talked about, bro, it was ridiculous. The way that he read the route, like literally ran the route just as well as Jahan Dotson, if not better. Like literally ran the slam route with him and then like shimmied around Jahan Dotson to get the interception. It was a very good interception. It was a heads up play, very smart, very athletic. It was beautiful. I mean, like literally strapped up Jahan Dotson the whole route, ran the route for him like a Madden corner on the highest difficulty. It was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he even to the point that he ran the route so well that he kind of had to like reach back across his body to get the interception and he still made the catch so hey man expect great things from Cameron Curl this year and then Zach Selby said quote on Twitter probably said this before but I really love Quan Martin and how he's always around the ball unquote so Quan Martin getting a lot of praise he didn't note any specific play but sounds like Quan Martin's just having an elite training camp and looking like a still out of the second round where some people felt like he was a reach I'm a big Quan Martin fan I wanted him so bad before we even entered the draft and I was so happy when we got him I'm telling y'all if you sleep on Quan Martin wake up right now and then special teams wise like I already said in the intro we don't really have anything from that today fans weren't allowed to go and reporters don't really report that much um when it comes to certain things so we'll see if we get more information later maybe i'll do another video update y'all on whatever um, reports the reporters come out with later in the day but we'll see and then before we get up out of here in random news ron rivera had a press conference after practice of course and he said that the team will support jamin davis while the linebacker goes through the legal process for his speed and violations he also says that the, he feels the defense is far more mature than last year and he also said that he's impressed by the retention of the offense and how fast they're able to pick up the offense and learn things and hold on to it like they they, they do certain things like play a then they'll go to play B, play C, play D. And then later on, a couple of days later, they'll go back to play A. And then they just have it memorized. There's no, like, clunkiness. There's no sloppiness. There's no, oh, that's what you mean by no. Like, everybody's retaining information. And we're able to move on and move forward and dive deeper into the playbook because it's not taking them a long time to learn each piece. So that's beautiful. And then also, Ron Rivera was asked about his biggest surprise so far for the first week of camp. And he said the fan reaction. He said he was pleasantly surprised at the turnout. And a lot of people expected the fan fans to be heavy at practice and for it to be a completely different atmosphere after Dan Snyder sold the team to Josh Harris but even after expecting that the fans still found a way to surpass even those expectations so that's really good to hear and then again before we go just to let y'all know again we're having pads tomorrow people are probably going to be hitting a little bit more so that's going to be really fun that's going to change a few things because so far there have been no pads in any practice this offseason this is going to be the first time tomorrow that the commanders have practiced with pads on so we got to see what Emmanuel Ford what his lack of weight look like we got to see what this offensive line really looks like against this defensive line got to see what these linebackers look like all it is so much that's going to change tomorrow i'm so excited terry mclaurin even said in his press conference after the practice 
today that he prefers to play with pads because he's able to separate better because of it and all kinds of stuff so can't wait to see what practice looks like tomorrow if some of the people that we thought were contenders are actually pretenders and things like that can't wait but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video again i'm trying to read and reply to every comment whenever i get time so make sure y'all stay engaged with the channel because i'm lurking like i said some of the comments i see be having me dying sometimes so man I, i'm there it's just sometimes i have time to look but not reply a lot of the times you know i'm just busy making videos and things like that but i'm trying to do everything i can I'm, my goal is to reply to every comment in every video but of course that just doesn't always happen but of course man i appreciate all the support man please stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button for each and every video get it notified every time and of course shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsor names you scroll on the screen right now stay tuned for all of the content i'm working on so many videos like i said like three four videos a day today may even be like five with the jamin davis news coming out of nowhere so i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out oh.